Well, we're very excited here at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium to release these groundbreaking results on the use of ctDNA and CTCs to predict recurrence in early stage triple negative breast cancer. For our analysis, we utilized samples from our recently completed trial, BRE12158, which enrolled women with triple negative breast cancer who had residual disease after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. What we know is that these women are at very high risk of disease relapse based on this residual disease. This trial actually genomically sequenced the residual disease tumor and then randomized patients to either a genomically directed therapeutic or treatment of physician choice. For the pre-planned correlative results that we presented today, we actually drew blood for both ctDNA and CTCs after surgery and then followed these patients for outcomes. Yeah, they were actually absolutely dramatic. What we identified that patients who were CTDA positive, they had a inferior distant disease-free survival with an estimated two-year DDFS of 56% in patients who were positive for CTDNA versus 81% in patients who were CTDA negative. So a huge stratification in the disease-free survival for these high-risk patients. What was also neat is that we also combined the use of CTCs, or circulating tumor cells. These are live tumor cells that float in the circulation, and using very sensitive techniques, we can identify these cells. And when we combined the ctDNA and CTCs, we found stark differences in outcomes. Patients who were positive for both ctDNA and CTCs had a two-year disease-free survival, distant disease-free survival, of 52%. Those who were negative, however, had a two-year DDFS of 89%, so a group of patients do exceptionally well. And that's what was really interesting from the study, is that we first found a group of patients who actually had very poor outcomes, but also a group of patients that did quite well. And these patients who did quite well actually had clinical parameters of high-risk disease. Many of them had large tumors or lymph node involvement, yet still did well when were negative for both biomarkers. Well, I think the main conclusion here is that this is an absolute necessary stratification factor for future post new adjuvant studies. And we at IU are very excited about the launch of our new study, the PERSEVERE study, which will actually incorporate this powerful information provided by molecular, uh, by molecular MRD. Uh, in our new trial, we will enroll women, again, who have uh, residual disease after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, but this time stratify them by the presence of ctDNA. For those women who are ctDNA positive and harbor an actual genomic marker, they will be assigned a set of, to one of a set of therapies based on the genomic alteration observed. Uh, and then for those patients who are negative for ctDNA, we're going to assign them to treatment of standard of care and watch and wait. That's a great question. Um, so what we know is that ctDNA is more sensitive uh, to uh, detect the presence of minimal residual disease. But what we found was CTC was actually complementary to ctDNA. So when we looked at our patients who recurred, our sensitivity to detect recurrence went from 79% with ctDNA alone to 90% when we combined with CTCs. So we believe this is really powerful when used in combination. Yeah, so that's a great question. So I think one of the powerful results of our studies was these results were significant above and beyond standard use clinical parameters. So we did, we considered RCB, we considered tumor size of surgery, lymph node involvement, and a variety of other factors. And the presence of these circulating biomarkers portended inferior outcomes even above and beyond standard clinical parameters. Well, we're just really excited that we will have these results ready for our, our patients. I think an important point is that uh, many will ask, is this something we should do in clinic on Monday? And the answer is no. Um, we don't know if having this information will actually improve outcomes. But what we do know and what we're excited about are these new trials where we want to intervene therapeutically in these patients who we know are high risk and see if we can really improve outcomes for this high risk population.